The first thing you got to realize about beef, if you're not beefing with yourself, you're not doing life right. And for a long time, I was not doing life the right way. I wasn't beefing with myself. And for about the past decade, maybe 12 years, I've been at war with Big Sexy. So as we start this series on beef, coming in at number 50, Jason Big Sexy Whitlock. I've been beefing with myself for a long time. It, it really started with this nickname uh, that I gave myself and was given to me when I was in Kansas City uh, as a sports columnist, as a radio talk show host in the 1990s. I started calling myself, people started calling me Big Sexy. Big mouth, sexy opinion. That's what it stood for. But th it was also a double entendre. So the thing about my size and weight, obviously, and about my sexual promiscuity. And, and I had built an identity that worked against me, but it wasn't until 2013, 2014, when I came under attack after going back to taking a job again with ESPN to take on the project of the undefeated. And I'm sitting here getting attacked by everybody in the left-wing media, I'm public enemy number one. Deadspin is writing all this nasty stuff about me. Uh, other media outlets are writing nasty things about me. People over Twitter, I, I'm just a constant target. There's nothing I could do. I'm sitting at ESPN. Executives are undermining me at every turn and trying to paint a really negative narrative about me. And for a long time, before I went to war with myself, I just felt sorry for myself and felt like I was a victim. And what I had to figure out is that I was a fraud, that the whole big sexy persona was fraudulent. And that character is probably what fueled a lot of the animus towards me because the left, the progressive left, the promiscuous left, the, the, the people that view sexual liberation as a tool for political control felt like that I had betrayed them and that's why they were so angry and that's why they were so dedicated to destroying me. The guy whose possibly most uh, popular columns, with, with, uh, yeah, I could arguably say I, I was known for the pussy galore columns that I wrote at Fox Sports. And, you know, Pussy Galore, the James Bond character, but it was my way of arguing that, you know, P. Galore was undefeated. That man was no match for a woman's vagina. I used to write hilarious columns about that. And that's why the left and progressives had a right to feel like, well, hold on, man, Whitlock's leaning into his Christian values or what they perceive as conservative values. He's selling us out. We're not gonna have that at The Undefeated. We're not gonna have a platform at ESPN that is uh, covering black culture in a way that's not consistent with the lane that the power structure and the puppet masters had cut out for black people. So I had to be destroyed. And that all came to a head on April 27th, 2015. On that day, intentionally, Deadspin and the little black puppet that they had hired, Greg Howard, uh, wrote or published 10,000 word piece on me, just totally assassinating my character. And that's pretty much the day I decided to go to war with Big Sexy. After I quit feeling sorry for myself and started figuring out like, okay, what are you gonna do from here? And the number one thing I thought was like, I gotta get right with God. I have to destroy the big sexy character and be who God wants me to be if I'm going to survive this. 
because the left, uh, the political left, progressives, liberals, had decided we're taking this dude out. I'll never forget uh, the day that story was published. Tommy Craggs, one of the editors over at Deadspin, who was one of the one of the masterminds or one of the main puppets being used to destroy me, he tweeted out an image uh, with a link to the story with a gun uh, to someone's head. It was some kind of emoji with a gun to the head. It's like we just delivered the kill shot on Jason Whitlock. He'll never recover from this. And I can remember thinking like, man, these people want to destroy my career. What have I done to them? And then I pivoted to what have I done to myself? What, what made me think that you could represent these biblical, conservative, Christian values without becoming a target of the left? And so I then started Again, like really taking stock of myself and really at, hey, what have you done wrong here? And the number one thing I thought was, I'm not right with God. I'm, I'm not, the work that I'm doing isn't glorifying God. And so from that day forward, I said, I gotta get right with God. I gotta get some place where I could do work that was more consistent with the values I was raised with, the, the values that I believed in. So I went to war with myself and I started backing away from this big sexy persona and character that I had created. Eventually, obviously, uh, I landed at Fox Sports and doing the show Speak For Yourself and, and re-emerging after the kill shot. Uh, again, if, if you really, really believe in God, it, it's not about falling down, it's about getting back up and continuing on with the journey. And so that's what I did at Fox Sports for the next five years. I rebuilt myself and rebuilt a, a, a persona that was far more consistent with my biblical values and my biblical worldview. And, and it's like, cause if I'm going to go down, if they're going to assassinate me, if they're going to assassinate my character, I want them to, I want everybody to be able to see exactly why they're doing it. And it's because of my values that are consistent with Jesus Christ. I'm not saying any of this to portray myself as some sort of a victim. I brought this on myself. I was misrepresenting myself. I was a fraud that needed to be destroyed. And so God used my enemies to destroy that fraud and give me a chance to remake myself. It was a very, very humbling experience. It's a very, very trying experience, but it, it really hammered home to me. You better be fighting with that man in the mirror every day. You better make sure that that man in the mirror reflects who you really are and who God wants you to be, or you're going to be vulnerable to this sort of character assassination and destruction and so I, I look at the whole thing and people won't, you know, Whitlock, uh, you know, how, how angry are you with Deadspin and the Greg Howard kid? And look, I still crapple with those issues. I still don't like those guys. But I mostly recognize that the problem was me. If I didn't start beefing with myself, I was going to lose. And so, as you enjoy the rest of this beef series, as I go through the other 49 people in the media that I'm beefing with, always remember, I'm beefing with myself as well. That's the first person I'm beefing with. And so you'll see names on this list. You'll say, oh man, what long you be? Yeah, I, 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 I'm good with myself. And so you'll hear people on names like, that you'll hear me say I'm beefing with, doesn't mean I don't, uh, I don't respect them, doesn't mean I have an incredible animus with them. It just means that at some point in time, we disagreed and we beefed. And so I put them on the list. I'm beefing with myself. Why can't I beef with other people? All right, so Jason, big sexy Whitlock, that big fat guy that you see in the picture there in, in the t-shirt and the sunglasses and hat, what a clown that guy was.